Hello, and welcome to our Gamudians Copy Chats podcast. We talk to our colleagues and friends across Gamuda to find out how they like to drink their coffee, what they're currently working on, and to learn from their experiences. I'm your host, Ronan Collins, and our podcast producer is Azrael Bin Azman. Today, we are having coffee with Wong Sing Lung, CIO of Gamuda. We discuss working from home and how our colleagues are learning to use Skype and Teams to collaborate and arrange meetings online. We find out how he drinks his coffee, and we hear about a book that he's reading on giving advice. And when he's not doing work, we find out what Sin Long gets up to on the weekends, including some retail therapy. So without further ado, let me introduce Wong Sin Long. So um, one of the things that we uh, we wanted to inject into the podcast is a, a couple of typical questions that we're going to ask everybody that comes on. And we've called this the Gamudian Coffee Chats, which right. is obviously a, a, a local way of naming a podcast. So the question is for you, Sin Long, how, how do you take your coffee? <laughs> How do I take my coffee? Black and short. So you like it with a kick? Very strong. <laughs> How many cups of coffee do you get through on a daily basis? Uh, between four to five. Yeah, okay, similar to me. I'll tell you what, my, 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 my wife was uh, laughing this morning. I was having a, a meltdown because my uh, Nespresso capsules are running low. So mm. we're trying, trying to figure out if I can order Nespresso capsules. Or rather, I'm going to have to go back to drinking the, in, instant coffee. I have it on good order that uh, you can order online and they deliver it to you within two to three days. Ah, okay. So I think after this call, I'll, I'll see I'll see if I can put an order in them. Then I won't be uh, I won't be on a nervous wreck after no coffee for a few days. Yeah, yeah. Otherwise, we'll have to uh, stick to uh, Nescafe. Ah. So you got a chance to listen to that demo I sent you last week on the this idea for the podcast. Is it same reason same reason be professional in terms of the way we're approaching it? I think so. Um, bring a bit of lightheartedness and positiveness to this episode or season. Well, I think that's the important thing is to try and keep people connected and also give them something to kind of at least think about and be like even your meeting, just getting, getting people to think about what's going to happen when we get back to work in a few weeks' time. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. What's the current thinking in terms of the extension? Are they, are they, there's been a few discussion points about it getting extended to the end of April. Is that realistic? Um, could be, but I guess they don't have to make the decision right now. Yeah. They're probably another week or so. Right. Um, yeah, but we don't know what uh, what's going to happen. It's also a time for us to recalibrate, recalibrate and see what's important. Yeah. True. I think the, the other thing that's quite interesting, it's taken me two weeks to get into a routine. Like today is the first day I could honestly say I've done some decent work. It's like it's been quite disruptive, the whole thing. Oh, really? I've been working, but not like it doesn't seem that you're as productive as when you're in normally in the office. I don't know. It's just I think there's a constant barrage of WhatsApp messages and a constant kind of can you take a call? Can you take a call? So every time you sit down and try and do some work, there's, mm. there's nearly an instantaneous interruption. Ah, right. I don't know why. I don't know why that is, but and then of course if it's not work interrupting, there's a, a five and a half year old standing behind me asking me some question about Lego or something. Mm. So. Uh, that, that's something that you we all have to manage. Yeah. Uh, because the work-life part now, it's it's not like, you know, when, when, when you say you're working from home, um, you actually spend all your time at work when you're at home. Yeah. But now, the situation is different. Um, your your spouse and your family is all around. Your, your spouse could be working from home also. Uh, you probably may not have. Um, dedicated spaces. You may, may not. Some people um, struggle with that. Yeah. Uh, and I think we have to make an allowance for that. Um, so it's important to to have a lot of empathy during this time. Uh, to also, um, I believe, in a way, give permission to our team members to say it, it's okay. Uh, we know that. Uh, your so your home life is impinging into the work, but that's fine. Yeah, yeah. I think I think people are getting quite quite innovative as well. It's even me. I I I'll probably finish around four in the afternoon, and then I'll go and spend some time with my young my young fellow. And then once he's gone mm-hmm. off to bed, I'll probably come back to the, the computer and do a few check a few emails, clear a few things out, and catch up on a few bits and pieces in, in the peace and quiet of the evening. So you kind of recalibrate your day, but you still get your work done. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Uh, I do that too. Yeah, but. For me to get to the routine, I still wake up at the same same time, um, and 
I love the commute. <laughs> <laughs> it's a, a short, in your case, you, you're in a house, right? So it's probably a short walk down the stairs, get yourself a cup of coffee. Yeah. yeah well, well I, could, I could do, uh, you know, um, spend more time with my with, with coffee and breakfast and um, with my wife as well. Yep. Then, uh, yeah, you get, you get dressed. And start the day. Yep, I actually do that. Yeah, I've got I've got a routine as well. So I, I I've been I've I've set my goal for this year to lose some weight. So I'm exercising a lot more than I have in the past. So I'm on, mm. I'm I managed to get a trainer for my bike. So basically, two or three mornings a week, I'll get up, I'll go and do a, some exercise, and then I'll have breakfast, and then I'll be ready from the start of the work day. And what we've been doing, the team I've got, we've we've a, a nine o'clock in the call in the morning. So every morning we get together on the phone just for 10, 15 minutes. And it's a great mm-hmm. way to actually create a structure. So you've, you're sitting at your desk, you're ready to go. You're, it's like, so you're not, there's no excuse for not being ready to go at nine o'clock in the morning and do a day's work. So it's good. But yeah. the, root, the routine is really important. Yeah, I, I, I think so. And it also puts your frame of mind onto work as well. So it's important to have that distinction. Yep. Yep. So yeah, especially the weekend. So we, so on Saturday and Sunday, it's also really important not to work. So you don't blur, you don't blur all the days. So... I do my DIY projects on Saturday and Sundays and keep away from the laptop. Yes, that's true. Um, I think when we're working from home, it's also important to know when exactly that we have to stop um, and, and, and you know move away from work-related stuff. Yeah. Uh, otherwise, it will just uh, suck you into it and this is never-ending. And, you know, we're, we're constantly bombarded with all these WhatsApp messages I think three quarters of it is probably repeats. <laughs> Some funny video that somebody's found they want to share with everybody, all the friends. Yeah, and uh, you know if if you if you don't if you're not careful, you you'll be sucked into it, and uh, and depending on what you read, it could, it could also pull you into a negative zone. Yeah. So important to uh, make sure that uh, you know when to stop. Absolutely. Or or even not start sometimes. <laughs> yeah, just leave your phone turned off. <laughs> so, yeah. so how, so have you found um, any in uh, kind of new innovations coming from the teams? So the the thing that's fascinated me the last couple of weeks is people are getting quite cl- um, good with Teams and and even like we're on a Skype call. People are getting quite good at Skype. There's, there seems to be a couple of new learnings in, in <clears throat> across the organization in terms of these technologies. Do you, do you think that's going to become more prevalent going forward? I believe so. I think uh, you know. Um, the, the, there's a need now for us to use all these digital tools because we can't do it face to face anymore. Yeah, and uh, a lot of people are actually experimenting with all the different tools that we have. Uh, I mean, the corporate standard is Skype and uh, Microsoft Teams, but we've got people using Zoom, yeah. Life Size, Blue Jeans, and other things. So, that, so life life size. I heard about that one this morning. Which one is life size? Because the guys in Singapore are using that one. What I I I had never heard of it. What's life size? Life size. I think started out as a uh, video conferencing system. So they they've got the whole whole range, including cameras and all that. Um, and actually, our video conferencing systems are based on life size. But now I believe they've branched into. Um, services where you don't actually need to use their, their equipment, but you can, it's more ubiquitous or I believe the technical term is unified communication. Ah, okay. So it's, it started off as a hardware plus software combination. Yeah, that's right. Ah, okay. Okay. Because the, the, the other one I found quite interesting on, on um, Saturday, I did a lecture at the university in Hong Kong and they use Zoom, but hmm. they actually have, uh, I guess it's a professional account. But what was interesting, well, I did the session and then after the lecture, the university sent me a link to download the video of the actual presentation, but it, com- right. it comes with a transcript of the actual presentation. So every speaker has what they've said, and it's actually quite accurate. So it's, a, it's, right. it's actually an instant way of keeping notes or minutes of a meeting as well. So it's, it's an early, I, I haven't seen any of our team using it, but I think it could be quite, could be quite interesting if you're doing a big group discussion and you wanted someone to, to take notes, it would, it's automatically creating the transcription of the, of the conversation, which is quite clever. Yeah, I believe they use machine learning for that. It's similar to what um, YouTube does. Yeah, you know, you can switch on the subtitles, and um, it, it sort of auto generates the subtitles. Yeah, and the good th- the good thing with that in YouTube is you can actually go in and edit it. So if it if it's got the wrong phrase or terminology, you can actually go back and change it. I've done that a few times; it's quite clever. 
Hmm. The other thing right. people don't realize is that when you Google search or YouTube search, it actually searches through the transcriptions. So some mm. of the video searches actually comes up based on the transcriptions. Yeah, it's quite clever. So um, you you put a very interesting post up on Workplace a couple of days ago about the uh, your observations around the MCO. Um, mm. What what do you think are the uh, the biggest concerns that we should have as a business going forward? So I know there's a lot of positives, but what what are the concerns we're going to have now in the next six to nine months? Getting GE back on track as fast as possible immediately after the MCO. Oh yeah, okay. Well, the same applies to GL, I guess. Yeah, should be. I think the this uh, coronavirus issue isn't going away. Um, it's not going to magically go away in, in a month's time or two months' time. So it's something that we will have to live with. And as a business, we have to adapt ourselves to that kind of situation. We have to adapt ourselves to where uh, maybe 20, 30 percent of our work of our workforce may get ill yeah. and not work for extended periods. Which is then, a huge number when you think about it. Yeah, it is. I mean, we're we're supposed to be lean and mean, right? Yeah. Um, and then to mitigate that risk, then we will have uh, to work with uh, split teams or continue continue this work from home um, arrangement where some of the team members actually work from home. Yeah. And then uh, the other the, the other parts of the team may may have to go back to the office, and we will have to work out the logistics and the arrangements for that. So how do we actually uh, make sure that the business doesn't suffer and productivity as far as possible continues? Yeah. Okay. But I think the the I think the other challenge is going to be is resourcing these projects that we're trying to do overseas because overseas travel now is going to become a major issue in terms of the the, the limitations. So even even something as simple as crossing the into Singapore is now becoming a huge challenge. So that's that's going to be another risk that I see we have to manage. Yeah, that's true. Um, Australia is even worse, I think. But they're still working in Australia. I was speaking to one of the team in Australia this morning on another call, and and the guys are still doing their work, and they've still got the sites operational. But they they actually think there's going to come to a grinding halt because interestingly, the health and safety regulations in Australia in the tunneling sector require the use of the, the masks, the N95 masks, but they're mm -hmm. now in such demand for the medical field that there's going to be no masks available for the tunneling operations, which means they're going to basically have to stop all the tunneling works. Oh, right. But I, I think this is just a temporary uh, blip yeah. because uh, eventually the supply chains will catch up. Um, there's going to be a, a lot of uh, supply for masks and surgical masks or N95 masks that's probably... Uh, in the pipeline right now. Yeah. So probably in a month or two, um, supply will be back to normal. I, I believe. Hopefully, at least it'll have stabilized so people won't be uh, panic buying things like masks and other things that they've been hoarding, I think. Mm, yeah. So we all know you as the, the CIO for the group, but um, is there anything you'd like to share with us from what what do you, what do you do at the weekends when you're not working? How do you how do you relax and unwind? What what are the kind of things you get up to when you're not at work? The weekend agenda is very much driven by my wife. Ah, the head of the house. Yes, exactly. So she determines what we do <laughs> most of the time. So we'll have to get her on the podcast next and ask her what she gets up to. So <laughs> yeah, so so I mean things it it, it varies. Um, uh, sometimes we go back to to our hometowns. Um, fortunately, we're, we have the same hometown, which is Malacca. It's a nice spot to go. Yeah. Well, it's not a nice spot to go during the weekend because half of Singapore is there as well. <laughs> and half of KL. Pl plenty of people go from KL down to Malacca for the weekend exactly. as well. Exactly. Yeah. That's one of the things that we do during the weekend. The other one is probably uh, retail therapy. Yeah. But increasingly, I think... Um, a lot of that is also done online, so uh, that's also a shift in our behavior, I believe. Uh, more, more so now, actually, since uh, since the MCO. Yeah, we've done a lot more shopping online as well. Yeah, I think it's probably going to become more popular. But I th the other thing that we've discovered with the online shopping is there's certain things you can get with res relative ease, but there's mm. a lot of stuff at the moment because of the MCO. The, the the companies are not actually going into their warehouses or the stores, so it's very hard to actually get certain items. Mm -hmm. Right. So I guess people have different experiences with this over the next couple of weeks, I guess, with the, the online shopping, depending on what's available and what, what companies are working.
Yeah. So weekend is also a time for me to catch up on my reading and uh, yeah, spending time with the family. Yeah, good. So have you got any? Yeah. Have you got any good books you would recommend to people that we're all sitting at home not doing much at home? Do you do you read books in paper format or do you have a Kindle or do you listen to them on Audible or how do you consume your books? Uh, paper as well as uh, electronic form or Kindle. Um, Audio books, not so much. Right. So, have you got any? Have you got a good good books you want to recommend to the the the, the staff to to read up read up on while they're sitting around the next couple of weeks? Um, the book that I'm reading now is called The Advice Trap. It's a book about coaching, actually. All right. And it's about basically telling you not to give advice, but to stay curious. Ah, and okay. Not to jump in straight to solve people's problems, yeah. but to be able to help people to solve their own problems in a way. Uh, it reminds me, I, my, one of my previous bosses, he had a, a way of doing that where, where he had a, he called it the monkey on your shoulder. So uh -huh. you, 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 if you went to him looking for advice or some guidance, he, he, he had you coached. That it, doesn't mm. matter, it doesn't matter what monkey you had on your shoulder when you walked into his office. You were yep. going to be walking out of the office with the same monkey on your shoulder and possibly one <laughs> or two others, but he was not going to take your monkeys. So he was quite happy to share his opinion and give some ideas, but he, mm. he was always going to be coaching you from the perspective of you have the problem, you have to fix it. I'm, I'm not taking on your monkeys. So co coaching is quite an interesting thing, especially to get to more senior levels in the organization in terms of making sure people are being autonomous and making their own decisions. Yeah. yeah. I think it's uh, important that as leaders, we don't jump in to solve other people's problems because otherwise you end up solving everybody's problems and you, you won't have time to do other things. Yeah. So, and, and at the same time, you would, like, you would want to help and enable your team members to actually be able to grow and be able to solve their own problems. And I think most, especially in, in an organization like Kamudu, where there's a lot of very clever people and some brilliant people are solving problems, they don't. They don't want someone to solve the problem for them. But they like. I'll come to you on a couple of occasions where I'm a bit concerned about some of the reactions I'm going to get to, from certain corners of the group. So it's it's more a case of the advice I'm looking for is how to thread through the conversation rather than actually how to solve the problem. I think that's that's also important. Where you like an, a guy like me is relatively new to Gamuda. The advice mm. is more of the, these. These are the avenues you can pursue, and these are the people you should be speaking to, and and that's how you're going to get a successful outcome. And it's just yep. no. It's just knowing how to navigate your way through the organization as well. It's not, you, you may well have a solution to a particular problem. It's, it's also understanding how to navigate your way through the business is quite important. Mm. But half the time, we measure our worth by the advice that we give. So the more advice we give, the better we feel about ourselves. Right. And uh, the author actually says that, hold on giving the advice because yeah. you may not be solving the right problem anyway. Ah, uh, okay. Dig a little bit deeper. And then you'll probably uncover something which could be the actual problem. Yeah. Okay. So it's it's to take the time and ask questions and let the let the person you're speaking to kind of divulge some more information before you start trying to figure out what the problem is. Hmm. Exactly. Cool. So um, I've got one last question by way of a, a kind of a closing question. Do you listen to podcasts yourself? And if so, which kind of podcast do you like listening to? Actually, I'm starting to to listen to podcasts because a very convenient way of listening while you're maybe commuting to work or something. Yeah. And you don't have to have your eyes glued to the screen to do that. Yeah, it's great. I, I do it the same. I, I usually listen to the car on the way in, and then you don't have to worry about tuning into radios and listen to whatever junk's on the radio. So you can actually sometimes pick up some little nuggets, and sometimes it's just, just a, a, an interesting way to pass the time in the car on the way into work. Yeah. So I think, Sin Long, that's been great. I think we've got um, some really interesting nuggets and some really useful pieces. So um, thank you very much for your time. I really appreciate it. OK, thanks for doing this. So you find someone uh, even more interesting than me the next time round. Oh, well, let's see. Thank you for listening to Gamudian Copy Chats. Please let us know your thoughts by commenting in Workplace or by emailing me at ronan.collins at gamuda.com.my. If you have suggestions for who we should chat to or if you would like to join us for a chat yourself, do let us know. Until next time, enjoy your coffee. Bye for now. <laughs>